In this video, we're going to look at finding confidence intervals for population proportions. Now, most of the time we've been dealing with uh, means, but now we're going we're to look at a new population parameter, which is P, which stands for proportion. So instead of the mean, which is the average of a group, this will be used as proportion, measurement of successes, whatever you want success to be out of a total. So, so let's say you have uh, your sample size is n and you're letting x be the number of successes. We're going to have a sample variable is p hat. That, that's the estimation for p. Just like x bar is the estimation for the population parameter mu. This is just like that except we're doing with proportions. Now uh, a common example where you would see uh, confidence intervals used for proportions or would be such as political polls and surveys where uh, if it's based on percent, you know, suppose a certain candidate, uh, you take a poll before the election and you get a result 60 percent. So on average every six out of ten of, in the sample voted would say they would vote for that particular person and then you always see a, a margin of error built in there and that's what we'll look at too, the same kind of uh, idea of margin of error that we've had before with confidence intervals for the mean. So that's the most common place you'd see proportions used and there's other areas where you would see proportions but that's one of the most common. Now to be allowed to use the D Z distribution it has to satisfy the following criteria. And I'm going to make sure that our problems satisfy that criteria so there's no, no doubt. So your p hat, your sample proportion, times n must be greater than or equal to 5. And then n times q hat must be greater than or equal to 5, which you see over here to the side is that q hat is 1 minus p hat. So those need to be satisfied to be able to use the Z distribution. Now that doesn't mean we would use the T distribution, it just means it really would not work very well. So basically it's Z distribution or neither. Alright, the idea of this confidence interval is the same as any where you have your sample estimate and you subtract a margin of error and you add a margin of error. So that idea is kind of the same here. So, uh, so the P is the proportion, so we're saying with a certain degree of confidence, we think our P would be somewhere between the P hat minus a margin of error and the P hat plus a margin of error. Now here's how you get the margin of error for proportions, right here. You take your critical value z, and then all under the square root you have p hat times q hat divided by n, and once again the q hat is 1 minus p hat. So then over here to the right in blue I have it just all written out, the entire confidence interval written out as one thing. So it would be p hat minus that margin of error that, do, that we have over here and then p hat plus that margin of error. Then of course we'll look at um, putting this in the calculator. Okay. Now this first example is just how do we find the sample proportion, which isn't very difficult. This problem says uh, 458 U.S. adults surveyed 224 eat meat daily. So if we want to know then basically what's the sample proportion of people that eat meat daily sample, we would just take 224 divided by 458 and you know this could be decimal or percentage or you know there's no hard fast rule in the format nor the number of decimal places. I you know I would think 0.489 is certainly good enough for that first one. And the next one says, in a survey of 1,003 adults, 110 say 
They would go on vacation to Europe if cost didn't matter. So we were trying to come up with a confidence interval for what proportion of all U.S. adults. This, our sample proportion then would be 110 divided by 1,003, and you'd see it's 0 0.1096. Now, if you're doing these in the calculator, it certainly wouldn't hurt to use three or four decimal places. I mean, if you're calculating using the formula versus the built-in program, if you're using the formula, it would not hurt to maybe use about four decimal places just to make it more accurate, and that way you'll feel a lot better, you know, when you're checking for your answer. I mean, you'd probably still be okay with only a couple, but I wouldn't mind, wouldn't be bad to go about four decimal places. So what we're doing here now is we're going to find the 95% and the 99% confidence interval for the examples above. So for the first one, we were trying to come up with a 95% interval of the proportion of all U.S. adults that eat red meat daily by using that sample proportion. So I used 489 here. I think this case three decimals was fine because the next decimal would have been, would have been one. It would have been 4891. So I think 489 is fine, and therefore your Q hat would be 1 minus 0.489, which is 0.511, and then N is 458. Now over here I copied those three confidence levels for the Z, 90, 95, and 99. Remember these will be Zs, and I could show you that NP hat and NQ hat works for this. If you have a large sample size, you're going to pretty much... Uh, is pretty high probability you'll have no problem satisfying these two rules up here, but I'm going to make sure our problems always satisfy that, so it's not an issue. So there's our confidence levels for 90, 95, and 99. Remember this is Z, so we're not using the degrees of freedom like we do for the T distribution. So these are really pretty straightforward calculations, not too difficult. So for 95%, our ZC, our critical value, would be 1.96. So we have a P hat proportion here, 0.489. And then under the radical, we have a 0.489 times 0.511, which is the Q hat. You can see I calculated right up there. And then divided by 458, all of that is under the square root. See how my bar hangs over there? So that's all under the radical. And you see I did it just as if you were just using a scientific type calculator, just if you were just punching the numbers in without using a built-in program. So I have 0.489 minus 1.96 times all that stuff under the square root. And 0.443, what's, once again the number of decimals, I just used three here. And then the upper end would be plus, you know, it's always lower end first, upper end second plus, I get 535 if you round that 0.535. So what that says is, in our best educated guess here, because anytime you're using samples to estimate proportions, or in populations, excuse me, whether it's proportion or mean, you know, it's just an educated guess. Very good educated guess. So we're estimating then that there's a 95% probability that and I'll just express this as percentage, even though it's written as decimal. We're saying that 44.3% uh, somewhere between that and 53.5% of U.S. adults consume red meat on a daily basis. We have a 95% chance of that happening. Now, at this point we would have seen the Z interval and T interval for those confidence intervals. Uh, the next one is one prop Z interval. So it's all in the same category. That's how we do these proportions. So I'm going to go stat. Okay, make that a little bit bigger. Stat. Test. And not test. We want intervals. You use those tests for something later on. And let's see, there it is, one prop, one proportion Z interval. Now look, it only wants three things. It wants X, it wants N, and it wants the confidence level. So our X, let me check here, to scroll back up the other page, because, yeah, you see up here it is. 
So your X, your number of successes, you know, successes in whatever you're trying to measure, 224 out of 458 total surveyed. So we're going to say 224 is X, 458 is N, our total sample size. Confidence level is 0 0.95, 95%. Arrow down to calculate. And that should be in my notes here. Let's see. So, so it's telling you what P hat is, but there's the 443 and the 0.535 rounded. That's what we have. So there they are 4443, 535. Four, there you go. Not too bad. I don't think this is that difficult, whether you're, if you're using a, just a regular scientific calculator like I did up here. Or you know, using the obviously using the one prop Z interval makes it uh, a lot easier. Just remember, you remember to use interval, not test, because I've had students they'll try to do this in class. And I'm not my screen doesn't look like your screen. Whether this is for proportions or uh, means, it's because a lot of times they'll be using the ones that say test and not INT for interval. So needless to say, you guess you would have a totally different looking screen if that was the case. Now for 99%, everything's going to be the same except your Z. Your Z will change. All the other numbers will be exactly the same. So you see once again from these three Z's right here, 99% uh, will be 2.575. So you just change it to 2.575 and that's all I did right over here doing it, like it, treating it like if you were just using a scientific calculator. Um, and I could put that in there real quick and just if I go clear that and go stat test um, one prop Z int which was letter A there we go those see that's the same all the same numbers in there come over here 99 Calculate. So let's see that looks. Yeah, you can see I copied the calculator box already. Um, it's 0.429 if you go three decimal places on the low side, 549 on the high side. So we're saying there's a 99% chance that between 42.9% and 54.9% consume red meat on a daily basis. All right. Um, now for the next one, I didn't show this test for the for the first one, but I could have real. This is the one I said you won't have to do this, but this shows you're you're verifying. Well, say you want to do this, it's possible you might, but you would certainly see it. You know, on my exam reviews, if it was going to be something that was going to be asked on a test, you would see it there for sure. But generally, we don't have to. Um, but anyway, I just showed it for this one. So if you took N times P hat, 1,003, I mean, I didn't even show what it was, but it's clearly a number larger than 5. In fact, it would be around 100. And then 1,003 100, times 0.8903 is, is clearly larger. That's probably close to 900. So definitely larger than 5. So that's just like I said, as I wrote right here, that just means guarantee that the D, that Z distribution is valid. But if I ask you to find a confidence interval for a proportion, then for sure it's going to be valid. The only time that this could be asked is it could be asked as its own question, maybe, is the distribution valid, yes or no, by using this test. But if it's a calculation problem, it's going to be valid. Okay, so we're going to use the same as 95 and 99 again, so 1.96. And I'll go through this one a little bit faster. So you see it's the 1097 is the p hat minus 1.96. The square root of 109.1097 times the q hat 89.9803, all divided by 1,003. Close that off. And we get uh, 0, 0.9035. Um, 
and then you put plus in there, you get one, two, nine. So I use three decimal places. And then if you do the one prop Z int, you get the same thing, uh, basically the same thing. So this is the one I believe about the vacationing to Europe if cost didn't matter, I believe. Uh, yes. So that's saying we think there's a 95% chance that between 9% and 12.9% would, of US adults would go if cost didn't matter. And then 99%, you just change that to 2.575. And uh, therefore, it widens your interval like it's supposed to. Anytime you increase the confidence level, that makes the interval have more width, you know, broader range. Okay, so that's pretty much the same thing. So you would just change it. 95 to 99, if we're just using a scientific calculator, just change the ZC to 2.575. Now there is one situation, that I don't know if it'll come up or not, but just in case I need to make you aware of this, is that there is one situation that you, you, you may have, it, it works fine if you're just using the formula, like I have up here in this upper left, if you're just calculating using the formula, but could cause you a Z, uh, issue if you're trying to use the calculator. Because I've seen some problems will give you the N, but then they give you the proportion of successes. They give you the P hat instead of giving you the X. So in other words, instead of giving you N and giving you X, they're giving you N and they're giving you the P hat, which is X divided by N. Well, where that could be a little tricky for the calculator is the calculator only wants you to tell it what X and N are. It doesn't ask for P hat, but you can see that the formula here, let's go back up here, if you're doing the formula manually, see right there, Z, C, C, P hat, Q hat, N. So that works perfectly for this, but it doesn't work perfectly here for the calculator. So what you kind of have to do, I, you know, you, you might still want to use this formula. I'll show you doing it the calculator just to back up your answer because it could be a little bit off because of what we're about to do. But if you notice from this basic formula, P hat equals X divided by N, X would be the same thing as N times P hat. Just kind of, you know, cross multiply both sides. And then a lot of times though, when you do that, you won't necessarily get an integer answer, so you have to round. And that's what makes it a little bit off too. So we come down here. So we don't know what X is, so if we take 355 and multiply it times 0.18, that gives you 63.9, but uh, X has to be a, a whole number because it's the number, just like N's a whole number, because X is a number of uh, successes. So we have to round that to 64. But anyway, let's look at the formula, and I'll put this in the calculator and show you. I just have the answer here, but I'll go ahead and put that in the in there, and I'll show you that step. But let's look at it with uh, the formula. All right. So we know that. See, I've over to the right. Q hat's always one minus P hat every time. So if P hat's 0.18, Q hat would be 0.82. One minus that 0.82. So. The confidence interval then would be P hat 0.18 minus 1.645, which is your critical value. That's one of the big three up there. 90% is 1.645. The square root of 0.18 times 0.82 divided by 355 is your N. So you see that doesn't cause, not knowing X does not hurt us at all if we're using the formula. And then you do the minus for the low end plus for the high end. And you get 1464 on the low end, 2135 on the high end. So let's do the one prop Z in. Stat test. So the answer is going to be a little off here because of that rounding, but not too far mainly because 63.9 is close to 64. So that's 64. Uh, let me double check. I think it's 355, but let me look to make sure I don't get it wrong here. Yes, 355.
90, 0.90. Of course, it's going to drop that zero, which is fine. I put it in there anyway. I'm going to copy this. and put it in the notes. I can move this over, move this around a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and just use that. Actually, it doesn't matter. But let me, uh, I guess I could use the new output that matches this newer operating system. I mean, it's not going to change anything, but. All right, where'd my calculator go? Here we go. Okay, there we go. Now calculate. So now I can screenshot this. Copy. Put it right in here. I'll just get rid of that other one. All right, well, it's kind of small, I guess, but you can zoom in on it, make it a little bit bigger. Don't want it to interfere with my cue there. It's a little bit bigger. So you see it shows the, the P hat is 0 0.18028, but it's really 0 0.18. That's just because the, the estimate's a little bit off. But it, you know, if you look at the answer here, it's instead of 1465, it's 1467. Instead of 2135, it's 2138. So, so that's, if you run into that scenario, that's what you're going to have to do if you're determined to use the one prop ZN. If you're just using the regular formula, it will make no difference whatsoever. Now, just like we did for, uh, the, the mean is we're going to see, let's find the minimum required sample size. In other words, that means we know what margin of error we want based on a certain confidence level, what sample size would it take for us to achieve that goal. All right, so once again, this formula is derived, uh, and you don't have to derive it, um, thank goodness, but it's just, so this, you see that's our margin of error formula and here's your E. So I just did some algebra to this and to where you would solve for N. So it's right here. It's P hat times Q hat and then it's separately in parentheses it's your critical value Z and then divided by your margin of error that part is squared but not the first part. Now this is a little different because there's two possible scenarios you, you could encounter here. Whether or not you are given some sort of value for p hat or not, it's possible you may not be, but we have a way to deal with that if we're not. So this says that, you use this formula, if your problem does not give you a p hat, you use p hat 0.5 and you use q hat 0.5. Other than that, if you were given some p-value, let's say 30% or something like that, you would use 0.3 for p-hat and 0.7 for q-hat. So 0.5 and 0.5, I'll just tell you quickly the, the why 0.5 is because if you take two numbers and add them together where they have to equal one, the largest possible product of p and q would be uh, 0.5 times 0.5, like if you took something else like uh, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 0 0.25, and so let's say if you took 0 0.6 times 0 0.4, that's 0 0.24, well you would keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, that's, that's the maximum. So what it does is if we don't have a preliminary estimate, we want our sample size to be on the high side. So that's just, that's the reason why, you don't have to know that, but it gives you a larger sample, sort of better, better safe than sorry idea kind of thing, so. Okie doke, we'll see what we got here. and.
so it tells you and then of course there are those three little confidence values again that we had in the other page we'll be using those all right so let's try this out of course you know you're looking for the same kind of wording here the e being the within so you wish, wish to estimate with 90% confidence and within 2% of the true population the proportion of males aged 20 to 34 who have high blood pressure. So this uh, actually has two parts. Um, like on an exam question, it would not be two parts. It would be one or the other. Find the minimum sample size if no preliminary estimate is, is available. And the second part says if 6.4% of males in this age group were known to have high blood pressure. Okay, so the first one, 90%, that means our ZC would be 1.645. P hat, because we have no estimate, is 0.5, therefore Q hat is also 0.5. So our sample size would be 0.5 times 0.5 times, in parentheses, 1.645 divided by 0 0.02. 0 0.02 is the decimal equivalent of 2%. So there's uh, no built-in program for the sample size. You have to actually just calculate it with standard calculations. There's not a built-in program. But fortunately, it doesn't take too long to do it. So we get 16.91. Uh, technically, you're supposed to round up. But that's not as critical as stuff we've done in the past, like class width. I, it's just better if you round up the next one. But there's no chance that I would ever have answer choices where you would have 16, 1691 and 1692, both back-to-back. -back. But I would expect it to be rounded up, though. So Now the next part of this. All right, now we have a P hat. So we use our P hat that we're given. 0 0.064. Therefore, Q hat would be 1 minus that P hat, 1 minus 0 0.064, which that's point, equal to 0 0.936. So we have 0 0.064 times 0.936. And then in the parentheses here, we have the exact same thing, the 90%, 1.645, divided by that same margin of error, 2%. Uh, you square, only that part is squared. Let's go back up here and look at my calculator box. And see, see how I squared that one? There it is down here, 405.25. So technically, I would say 406 is the best answer for that. All righty, let's try another one of these. Now, this is one for a, a confidence level that's not one of your standard three, which we looked at how to do this before. Uh, when you're doing confidence levels for the mean for Z's. Um, so let's see, it says your travel agent wish to, wish to estimate with 98% confidence the proportion of vacationers who use an online service or the internet to make travel reservations. Your estimate must be accurate to within 4% of the population proportion. Okay, part A says no estimates available. Find the minimum sample size. Part B says prior survey study found that 30 percent said they used an online service so so we have an initial p hat for that one all right so now you can do the uh, process of inverse norm in the calculator you, what you do is you take one plus your confidence for anything that's not one of the big three 90 95 or 99 for the z you take 1 plus the confidence level divided by 2, which would be 1.98 divided by 2, which is 0.99. So if you're using the TI 83, 84, or high, things like that, you just do, you can do the inverse norm of 0.99, get 2.33. If you're using the chart, you would go inside the normal curve chart to find the closest one to 0.99, and 9901 is very close. And you would see it's on the 2.3 row, the 0 0.03 column, so it'd be 2.33. So that's the critical value we'll use here is 2.33 for 98%.
So once that was the, probably the most complicated thing in this problem, so once you have that, we're good. So the first part A was no preliminary estimate was available, so we used 0.5 and 0.5 for P hat and Q hat. So now we use that 2.33 that we just found above, divided by 0 .04. 0.04. 0.04 is 4%. So that estimate must be accurate to within 4%. So within is generally your, you know, your buzzword for margin of error. I guess it could actually say margin of error. So remember, you only square that part. I did it in the calculator over here to the right. I got 848.2 something, so I rounded up to 849 would be the appropriate sample size we need, minimum sample size. And then the next one, the only difference is that you see the preliminary estimate was 30%. So that means your prior P hat would be 0.3. So if P hat's 0.3, Q hat would be 1 minus 0.3 is 0.7. And then you have the same 233 divided by 0.04 squared. And that turns out to be 712 point whatever, but just round up to 713. And that would be the answer for that one. Sample size would be 713. And that is the end of this video.